call the November meeting of the Haywood County uh, Schools Board of Education to order at this time. This time I'd like to uh, ask Mr. <coughs> Jimmy Rogers if he would uh, lead the board in their prayer. Uh, board members, please rise for the prayer. Let us pray. Kind, gracious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, we thank you as we come upon this time for Thanksgiving. <coughs> thank you for what you've done for us and how you have been here for us when we've needed it. For the things you've given us, for all these things that we need to be thankful for. And Lord, be thankful for these teachers, these students, these schools that we have, the freedom that we have. Lord, we're so gracious that we can experience these opportunities that you bring before us. And we pray that this board right here, Lord, that you lead us and guide us in making the decisions that are in the best interest of the children of this county and that we can help lead them, grow them, teach them the right ways to be successful citizens and to be prosperous and be kind to all. Lord, thank you for this county that we live in, in this state, in this country. Be with each and every one of us as we go throughout our ways and throughout our days and that we make decisions. Lord, guide us and direct us. And we will always give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. 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 You want me to pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Our next regular board meeting will be held uh, December the 11th here at the Education Center at 7 o'clock. Uh, board members uh, look forward to seeing you down in Greensboro where we can learn uh, more about our schools and uh, at our North Carolina School Boards Association annual conferences. This uh, starts. Uh, Sunday if you want to go down early Monday through Wednesday and um, it's in Greensboro also like to announce tonight uh, the continuation of uh, those people that individuals that would be interested in serving on this board uh, mr. Smith had resigned from his uh, Beaver Dam uh, district seat due to moving out of district and uh, we are uh, asking folks that are interested in serving on this board to uh, apply to this board all you need to do is send a resume and possibly a cover letter describing why you want to be serving on the board or just a resume and send it to my attention Chuck Francis at Haywood County Board of Education 1230 North Main Street Waynesville and that's 28786 any other announcements that folks have all right under agenda adjustments i know mr henson has one item to add from the finance committee and we'll just do it under the regular finance reports mr henson does building and grounds have anything to add mr rogers buildings and grounds is very active tonight mr chairman so okay. we do need to okay add some items to the agenda please all right we'll do it right after the policies before mr henson then building and grounds if i miss it draw my attention to it please <laughs> okay any other adjustments that need to be made is there any objection to the agenda adjustments as presented? They will be added to the agenda. <clears throat> this time, uh, I'd like to recognize Mr. Ron Moss. Chairman Francis, Board, Dr. Garrett, Dr. Nolte, it is um, my honor to stand here and for the next two parts of the agenda to introduce Riverbend Elementary School and the people here that are representing them. Uh, the first item on the agenda for them is their spotlight, which tonight we're focused on their school. I'd like to introduce Jill Chambers, the principal of the school, and then I've asked her, and I know some of the staff, uh, Suzanne Bigsby, Jane Shewitt, Maggie King, Amanda Plummer, Janita Spratt, Nikki Barker, I think Mr. Kirkpatrick's wife is here, Nada Kirkpatrick, and other people who are here to support the school. 
So I'll ask them to come forward and tell us all the, about all the great things that are going on at Riverbend. All right, I need some readers here. So. <clears throat> Chairman Francis, board, Dr. Garrett, Dr. Nolte. I'd like to start with, um, I guess, thanking Dr. Garrett for hiring me for this. This is a professional highlight of my life, being the principal at Riverbend. And tonight, we are here to share about our sweet and wonderful little school. At Riverbend, we embrace our mission of growing together as a community of learners. All of us truly come to school each day ready to learn and grow. I'm sure by this time you've seen our test scores. We're very proud of our school and our performance, the hard work of our students, our teachers, and our A+. The news is always media worthy, but let me share with you how our faculty view school rankings based on one data point. We are proud of our data points, but we realize that behind every data point or test score, there is a child. And at Riverbend, it is the child that is most important to us. What we value most for our children are skills and attitudes that cannot always be measured. We value kindness and character, passion and perseverance, critical thinking, the love of reading, expressive and thoughtful writing, problem solving, and again, growing together as a community. These areas determine our students' quality of life, and it is these areas that we show how we care and what we're all about. Sorry, I might need a Kleenex. <laughs> But um, I'll get emotional, but enjoy with us our A plus and our blue ribbons. But also know that we agree with Albert Einstein, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. So with that, let us share with you a little bit about our school. Thank you. What happens when you start to cry? <laughs> As
It's like Joey. Everybody's nice here. Um, lunch. lunch. <laughs> um, I like that I get to learn more and get smarter and play. Hmm. Trying to think. Just getting to go to school. We have a few of the older ones now, so let me introduce Nevaeh Shewitt. Riverbend is the best school because Riverbend has their own fundraiser parties such as Panther Party Fun Night and Battle of the Books. For me and all my friends, I like to get up on the dance floor and party. <laughs> Riverbend also has after school, also known as Latchkey, where kids like me usually go to have some free time and have fun. Unlike some of the packed lunches kids bring to school, the cafeteria offers snacks that are healthy, bananas, yogurt, milk, and many more delicious snacks to have. Riverbend has gotten many awards, such as two nominations of being the Title I Distinguished School, and Riverbend was awarded the Blue Ribbon twice. That takes a great community. The teachers at Riverbend will make you do your very best. They have a lot of experience teaching and really care about each and every kid. They help you prepare for your next grade. The teachers really go the extra mile to help you understand the assignments. I sure have enjoyed my six years learning at Riverbend. And this is our boy Kirkpatrick. Ribbon is great because of all the teachers. First reason why the Riverbend is a great school is because of the teachers. Be, like Miss Bigsby over here, she is a great teacher because she likes to get um, detailed with her work and she likes to stand up in these chairs and if we're not, uh, <laughs> not focused, she usually gives us candy. <laughs> Everybody gets along with each other, and there, um, there, there's usually not uh, much fights. But uh, <laughs> and plus, there's no drama with that too. And each other, we also care for each other. This proves because um, this proves that we are a blue ribbon school, and this proves of the hardworking teachers and students. Riverbend School produces successful students. Each and every day, right? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lily Kate Plummer, and I go to an awesome school. I like Riverbend because we have pride. P is for the Panthers. Here at Learning Lane, we have a spirit for learning. R is for Riverbend, once again making a statement in North Carolina. I is for incredible. Being incredible isn't easy. It's like a superhero reaching new heights. D is for determination. Students, teachers, faculty, and staff work hard. I love Riverbend because we are the best. When I, show horse, when I show horses and the livestock, the blue ribbon is the top prize, and I'm proud of my blue ribbon school. E is for everyone. It takes the community, school, each class, and you and I to be recognized. We are the Panthers. We can roar.
Good evening, Chairman, Board, Dr. Garrett, and your staff, and everyone who's come to support our amazing school. My name is Jane Shewitt, and I'm very honored to be able to just say a few things in support of our school this evening. My husband, Scott, and I, who is a public school teacher himself, we moved into the area over a decade ago, and we found our way to Riverbend when our Nevea was going to start kindergarten. We had no idea of the experience that we were about to partake upon. It was just amazing. We, we went on kindergarten registration and from entering the, the grounds with the beautiful riverbend bushes, which have now been replaced, but the landscaping and then going into the interior of the building and the cleanliness and the preparedness of the program itself and <coughs> the staff there was so welcoming. We just knew that this was a very special school, and very unique, and my husband has been in many, many schools and we were so impressed. And we quickly, in kindergarten, joined the PTO uh, right away, and then shortly afterwards found ourselves as officers. So we, we said this is a community that we really believed in and that we wanted to build into and have this community build into our family. And as a parent and a staff member, it, it just from inside and out, being a parent and then later a staff member, I tell people all the time, it's, it's better on the inside than it is looking from the outside. It truly is a community that, that walks its mission in uh, representing the vision of growing together every day in every way. And the education and well-being of our students, and it, it's just a daily march. Our administrator, Ms. Chambers, just it's at the core of who she is. And it, there's just no deviation. That is our daily march there, day in, day out. And the passion and professionalism of our students and our staff and our everyone filtering down our, our food service workers, our bus drivers who are amazing, our custodians, and of course the office staff. We're just um, second to none, so we're very, very proud. And our families that support us, I mean, we have families that come in that don't even have students enrolled, and they want to volunteer or donate pumpkins, or, or what can they do? It's, it's just amazing. They're very generous with their time and their resources, and they're just very committed to maintaining the reputation that, that Riverbend has earned over the years. So I just couldn't be more pleased or more proud of our school, Riverbend, as a parent. And I also um, wanted to thank you, Dr. Garrett, for just an amazing amount of dedication and your wisdom and leadership has just been just exceptional, and not only for Riverbend, but all of Haywood County. So we thank you very much. Thank you. As you can see, I hire well. <laughs> you all are invited at any time to come to come to Riverbend and experience the sweet little school in the mountains any time, any day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, speaking of Blue Ribbon, uh, 342 schools from 44 states, the District of Columbia, and several Department of Defense schools were recognized this past Monday and Tuesday by the Department of Education as National Blue Ribbon Schools for 2017 based on their overall academic excellence or their progress in closing achievement gaps among student subgroups. Riverbend was among the schools that demonstrate that all students can achieve at high levels. The National Blue Ribbon Schools Award affirms the hard work of students, educators, families, and communities in creating safe and welcoming schools where students master challenging content. The National Blue Ribbon flag gracing a school's building is a widely recognized symbol, symbol of exemplary teaching and learning. National Blue Ribbon Schools are an inspiration and a model for schools still striving for excellence. And again, um, Jill. <laughs> yes.
accept this as a group because it can surely Absolutely, is. absolutely. We want to <laughs> award you a certificate and congratulate you, your staff, and your school for the great work that you all do. Thank you. And so I have a, a message from our uh, president. Okay. Well, I will get out of here while I okay. get back. <laughs> this is from our president, and it says, I send my warmest uh, greetings to those gathered for the 2017 National Blue Ribbon Schools Awards Ceremony. And like we said, this was, this was this past week. As a nation, we have a responsibility to provide all children a path to achieve their full potential. The institutions we honor as National Blue Ribbon Schools have demonstrated an enduring commitment to this important duty by meeting the unique needs of every student. The efforts of those outstanding teachers, principals, and school leaders reflect our shared conviction that every child has promise and deserves access to a highly qualified education. We applaud this year's awardees for their tireless dedication to ac academic excellence and improving education in America. By working together, we will continue expanding opportunities for the leaders of tomorrow and building a brighter future for our country. We send our best wishes for a, a memorial event that, and many more achievements in years to come. Signed, your president. I did nothing <laughs> except send a kid there. <laughs> yeah, I sent two there. Get closer. Bless you. Congratulations, Riverbend Elementary School. We're very proud of you, and uh, it's much deserved recognition. And uh, I was talking to Ms. Chambers earlier. I said if we could clone that community and school everywhere across the county, uh, that would be nice. But we have some great schools other than Riverbend. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Next on our agenda, we have Mr. Shepard. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce Mr. Trevor Putnam, who's going to come around and introduce uh, one of the coaches for Waynesville Middle School. They've got a very, very special accolade to be recognized this evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Garrett, members of the board, it's my distinct honor to get to recognize our football coach and football team who were uh, undefeated conference champions just want to say a little bit about our coach because I know our coach, he's, he's so very humble and he's going to talk about the players. So while I have the opportunity, I promise you these boys learned a lot more than football. They learned how to be young men, be successful in life, and they have life lessons that will carry them far uh, through this coach. Um, I was joking in the hallway, uh, rarely do you see the vice president, little known fact about Mr. Haynes or Coach Haynes, he's the vice president of a major uh, corporation. And about every Thursday, you could find him down there doing the wash. <laughs> so um, his level of humility and work ethic bestowed upon these boys, um, I just couldn't ask for more. And I, I charged him with a really tall task um, when we hired him. I said, I have expectations through the roof. We want to win. We want to win all the time. But most importantly, we want to be good citizens and have good kids. And I said, can you deliver that? And so uh, the last ball game we played, championship game, 
Uh, we defeated Brevard on our field. I got to look at him and say, expectations exceeded. So well done, Coach Haynes. And I'm going to let him talk about our, our players. Um, so Mr. Chad Haynes. I, uh, I didn't prepare to, uh, to say anything special. Um, I'll tell you this, I was at a board meeting this morning in Washington, D.C., and I'm probably a little more nervous right now than I was then because I was a subject matter expert there. You guys are subject matter experts here. I appreciate your service to our community, to our children. Uh, I was a product of Haywood County Schools. My mother taught Haywood County Schools for over 30 years, and my children are in Haywood County Schools, so I thank you all for your service. Um, I'll uh, take a moment to tell you just a little bit about our football team um, on a grander scale. Some of them are here tonight. You guys can come on in if you want to. I'm going to ask you some questions here in a minute. And hopefully they can answer. It's been a couple, three weeks since we've met and played. But uh, I'm here because, uh, in, in this role, because of the lessons that I learned on the football field. Um, and those things are things that I harken back on at least uh, once a week, two, three times a week usually. Um, and they're lessons that, frankly, I, I don't know that I could have learned anywhere else. And that's what I tried to, to instill in these young men. Uh, we get to spend a lot of time together. It's the nature of the beast with football. It's one of the things I love about it. Um, it, it at the youth <clears throat> level, it's, it's a big commitment. It's the same commitment, but it seems like the other sports kind of catch up in terms of time commitment in middle school. But uh, one of the benefits of getting to spend that amount of time together is you really get to know each other and become a family. Um, and they see the good and the bad, but it gives you an opportunity to explain, hey, you know, you're going to have to forgive coach this time. I messed up. And, 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 and you really get to see uh, all different sides of your team and each other and, and grow with one another. Uh, this particular group, uh, not all the kids here, but a big chunk of them, I would say 20 to 25, which is almost half. I had 50 this year. Uh, I actually had an opportunity to coach them. They were my first football team right across the river here at Lake Junaluska when they were five and six and seven years old. So I had a little bit of a, uh, uh, a leg up, I guess, so to speak, with regard to the eighth graders. The seventh graders I didn't coach as much, but the eighth graders I coached for three years over here at Lake Junaluska. And then to get the opportunity to come back and coach them at Waynesville Middle School was a dream come true. And, and we reconnected almost immediately. Uh, it was, uh, I don't know if it's me or, or what, but usually we have, uh, when I'm friends with somebody, I can reconnect with them really quick and, and uh, get to know each other again. But we had a good season. Uh, we were at it a long time. The biggest challenge, I've coached now nine years. Um, the biggest challenge every year with kids, and I don't think it's with kids, it's probably with anybody. When you get five, six, seven weeks in with anything, uh, and I'm pushing you hard, uh, you get tired of it. You get tired of it. So uh, we got to that point in our season. We were 4-5-0. Uh, and oh. uh, We just came off two, uh, three really emotional wins at Bethel, uh, Macon, and Canton. And I, uh, I challenged them. I asked them to reinvest, and, and they didn't really know what that means. And, and I asked them, I, I tried to explain to them uh, the one thing that a lesson that I learned a while back that really stuck with me uh, that, I, that I think back on is, is I asked him, I said, who here knows uh, what the opposite of great is? And uh, they raised their hands and they said, it's horrible, it's awful, and this and that. And I said, no, it's not. The opposite of great is good. And we're a good football team right now, and there are a lot of good football teams right now. But if you want to be a great football team, you got to reinvest. you got to dig a little deeper. you got to pay what it costs. And they all signed up, and, and we ended up, uh, I said at the banquet, I'll say it again, probably the last week and a half of practice was probably our best week and a half of practice. You don't see that much. You see it out of champions. And uh, I felt really good about, about it going into the game. We played a team in Brevard that was also undefeated in the championship. Uh, they had a probably a more prolific offense than we had, and we had a really good one. <laughs> but uh, they led the conference in yards and things of that nature. And, and frankly, we played our best defensive game. We shut them down, and we came away with a win. And so it was uh, a real proud moment of mine. I know these guys were proud. Their parents were proud. You guys are proud, and we appreciate that. I'm proud of, of, uh, of our half of the conference, and, and I know we're here representing Haywood County uh, as a whole. Um, if you looked up and down the west side of our conference, every team in the west won their playoff game. So Bethel won, Canton won, Waynesville won, uh, Smoky Mountain won, uh, Macon won, and, and, and Madison. So 
every team in the West beat every team in the East in the playoffs, and that meant a lot to me. And, I, and tr honestly, I think it's a big reason why we were so successful. We played a really tough schedule. There were no easy wins in the West, and Brevard had not played quite – level of competition that, that I think we had played. So uh, a couple of big things that I try to instill in kids every year, and I'll leave you with this unless you have any questions. Um, I always try to teach them that it takes two things to be competitive at football. Who wants to tell me what one? Come tell, come tell them what one of them is so they can all hear you. He's going to say the most important one first, but go ahead. Heart. OK, who else knows one? Come on. I know these two guys I did coach when they were five, so they've heard this multiple times. What's the other one? Um, head. Head. They say head and I say mind, but it's the same thing. So what we mean by that is uh, first you need to know where to go and what to do to be successful as a football player, okay? And that's where the mind comes in. And we work hard on that all summer long until we get our pads on and this and that. Uh, the second part is the most difficult part. Uh, to play football, you've got to be able to look down deep in here somewhere and decide to execute once you know you're in the right spot. And that's the hard part sometimes. And then the even harder part uh, is you have to have enough faith in your brothers around you that they're approaching it the same way as you do. And so I think all of us uh, were, were bought into that and it showed on the football field. And then the big lesson uh, that I get to at the end of the year is those same two things are, are, will carry you through illness, and anything you face in life, school, your school work, if you can dedicate your heart and your mind to it, you can be successful or competitive. You don't, you're, we're not gonna win every football game because we're not perfect people, but you can be successful in what you set out to do. So I try to instill that in them and, and I hope that it took. Uh, we've got a small group here, but a great group, a good mixture of seventh and eighth graders. Seventh graders, raise your hand. These guys will be back next year to defend our championship. Eighth graders, we're gonna send on to Tuscola High School uh, and I appreciate the ones that come. The other ones, you'd be glad they didn't show up because it would have been a big horde of football players. And these, it was hard enough to keep these uh, seven or eight quiet back there. But, uh, I appreciate y'all's time tonight. Thank you so much for the recognition. It means a whole lot. I'm glad and, and happy to go out and represent uh, Haywood County uh, in this role. And I thank y'all for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you want to get a photo op? Yeah. Where do we stand? Undefeated uh, season. You better get a photo op. We need to take a knee. No. Okay, right there. All right. Thank you, Chief. All right, guys, on three. One, two, three. Let's take one more. Let's take one more. And, and the other thing I didn't tell y'all is I wouldn't let them. Another lesson is we don't hold up the number one finger during the season, okay? We got to earn it. But we did earn it. We'll take one more with, with us. All right. All right, guys. Yeah. This time we'll recognize Miss Brandy Stevenson. Okay, Chairman Francis, board members, Dr. Garrett, Dr. Nolte, and friends. Where'd everybody go? <laughs> All right, so I get the honor of presenting Christy Blackburn again to you guys. You've seen her again this, uh, for this year, but this time it's for um, the EC Educator of Excellence for the 2017-18 school year. Um, she was voted by her um, administrators and peers um, for this honor, and she'll be honored next week um, at, the, at the annual EC conference in Greensboro. So I think that it's um, great because she gets to go to the conference for free and be honored um, because she loves, she's uh, kind of geeky and she loves to go to professional development. So she gets to go to the conference and soak up all that knowledge and come back and share it with others. Um, but I'm blessed to work with her and um, to know her 
and um, to love on her every day. So we're so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Again, um, Chairman and Dr. Garrett and the board and everyone, I, I've been extremely overwhelmed. I knew I stood here before and said that, but to be named a, a, as EC Educator of the Year, um, it's just humbling. It's such, been such a humbling experience because they're amazing educators and I just feel honored to be able to represent such an amazing county. Um, um, uh, and group of people who love children and love teaching and love uh, what we do. So just thank you all for the opportunity and all the support and everything you do to make what we do possible. So thank you. <laughs> Photo walk. Congratulations to all our award winners this evening, and congratulations to uh, the Winesville Middle School football team. What a great season, and what a great coach. What an inspiration. Next on our agenda, Ms. King, is anyone signed up to address the board? Okay. Board members, you've had an opportunity to uh, read and look over the October 9th, 2017 closed and regular session minutes. At this time, I'd entertain a motion that be approved as presented. Mr. Bobby Rogers has uh, made the motion. I hear a second. Second. Second, Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on our agenda, we have uh, Dr. Ann Garrett for our approval of the school advisory councils for 2017-2018. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, for your approval, you have those advisory council members listed as per general statute. This time we entertain a motion to be approved as presented. So moved. Mr. Rogers has made the, Mr. Jimmy Rogers made a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second with Mr. Francis. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Garrett. Next, we have our finance officer, Miss Angie Gardner. Chairman Francis, members of the board, I'm here to ask for your approval of the 2017-18 budget resolution. This year's budget resolution is comprised of the expense and revenue budgets of Haywood County State Public School Fund, Local Current Expense Fund, Federal Grants Fund, Capital Outlay Fund, Child Nutrition Fund, and finally Local Specific Revenue Fund. These six funds um, provide a total operating budget for our school system of $70 million. $985,781.07. This time we entertain a motion. We approve the budget resolution as presented. Motion to approve. Mr. Henson's made the motion. I hear a second. Second. Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Gardner. Now you've got a budget. <laughs> Expense money. Mr. Shepard's back for some policies that we've um, tabled for 30 days now, and I think most of them are up for second reading, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. The four policies that you have there are all for approval. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the four policies as presented for second reading. 
Okay, Mr. Francis made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second, Mr. Second, Mr. Jimmy Rogers. Any questions or discussion on any of the policies? <coughs> there being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. sir. Mr. Shepard, now we can go put some seat belts on some buses. Yes, we can. And we'll have a, a big list uh, for first read next time. We'll do the follow update list. So we'll have. Okay keep you busy reading next okay time. very good thank you very much yeah he kept us reading the other day so yeah be prepared. <laughs> it's been pretty busy Jimmy. <laughs> it's getting hey. busy now well next I think we have some several items on from the building and grounds committee chair mr. Yes, Jimmy you, Rogers. mr. chairman <coughs> Buildings and grounds have met previously and uh, we have uh, three motions to present tonight the first motion is that uh, we would like to uh, is in a motion to approve a construction of a tractor shed at Central Haywood High School with an approximate cost of $2,400. This funding of this will come from the agricultural program at the school and the construction will be performed by the buildings and construction program that the school offers. Wow. That's so nice. it's a win-win situation. So Very good. Children get it's the educational moment too. Educational moment too for the children. Right, so we have a motion from Mr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Say, so, Mr. Kirkpatrick. Any uh, questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Board members. Okay, now we have a motion now to approve the construction of a retaining wall at Tuscola High School. And that is in conjunction with future plans of a handicap ramp. Okay. Uh, we have a motion from uh, Building Grounds to uh, start the construction of a retaining wall with future plans for a, a ramp. It's in conjunction with in the conjunction. plans of a ramp being built on the same before page. the retaining. Yeah, it's kind of okay. in conjunction. Both of them okay. will work together to. All right. So we have a motion from the Building Grounds uh, Chairman, Mr. Jimmy Rogers. Do I hear a second? A second. Ms. Barrett. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? And again, Mr. Chairman, we'll have a lot of our students involved in this because Tuscola High School's masonry class will be helping to perform the work on the retaining wall, and that will give them a, another That's educational right. opportunity as well. Very good. What part of campus is? It's right as you're going up towards the offices, the main offices. The main office. We have steps so, there, okay. and which they've right been now handicap. Yeah, you have to come in the back, back door, side. and mm -hmm. so now we're trying to uh, incorporate with this retaining wall to help with the landscape, and then also a ramp to, to enter into Tuscola from the from the front parking lot there. Very good. Any other further questions or discussion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, Mr. Chairman, we have one more uh, motion here tonight. Uh, we would like to make at this time a motion to proceed with the biddings process for the synthetic flooring, for a synthetic flooring at the Central Haywood High School Gymnasium. Right. We're across the river, so. Okay in the form of a motion we have a motion from the building and grounds finance i mean building and grounds chair mr jimmy rogers that's a long title isn't it uh do i hear a second to the motion second so mr kirkpatrick any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor i have none good i, I will make a comment mr chairman that uh, uh there's been been several you know we do have several people using that facility and uh we pray we ask the, for their patience in, in getting this project completed yeah. uh, some of the groups that have been using that gymnasium it's probably not going to happen this season the basketball season but it's, it'll be a diligent yes. effort to work on it there's got to be a lot of uh, concrete work being done prep work before the flooring is, is uh, put down and like I say we're just bidding the flooring at this time so okay mm -hmm. any further questions or discussion there being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. That's all we have from the buildings and grounds at this time. Thank you, Mr. Rogers, for your fine work and the hard work of the building and grounds committee. I know they work hard. Next, we have our finance chair, Mr. Larry Henson, for our monthly financial reports. First up, um, finance committee met earlier and looked 
went over all the financial monthly financial reports and I make a motion to approve those. We have a motion from Mr. Henson, finance chair, to approve the regular monthly financial reports. Do I hear a second? Second, Mr. Clark. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next up, a motion to approve the purchase of eight new school buses. And these, we actually don't pay for. We're in a lease agreement, but we have to approve buying them. Correct. And we're going to get eight this year, which is unheard of. Yes. That's great. Yeah. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Henson to Second. approve the uh, purchase of the eight bunches or loan <laughs> approval of it. And Mr. Rogers is already uh, a second it, so we'll go forward. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? I well, just, these eight buses have the seat belts. Yes. That's what I was going to say. As of right now, yes. yes. As, as, as of allows, right now, I thought that's. As long as the state it, still allows us. As long as the state does what they're going to do. And they're the three point, not the lap belts, but the three point, which is much better. Well, yeah. Mr. Kirkpatrick, we, we, we received preliminary indications that as of right now, as long as the budget holds true, um, that our eight buses will come with three point seat belts. All right. Very good. Any other uh, questions or discussion <laughs> on the motion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next on our agenda, we have Dr. Oh, 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 more have another from Francis. Francis. I'm, uh, I'm it's sorry. It's not really a motion, but okay. uh, this some information that um, last year the teachers' bonuses that we paid out from local um, was 25000 and we received most of the money back in reimbursements from the state. We received 23000 a little bit, what, $1,500 difference that we didn't get back from the state where we voted to go ahead and pay those bonuses out of local money so we got reimbursed for it so that was good that was good news good news and we did the right thing i thought oh, yeah. yeah very good and that's all we have from finance committee i'm sorry mr Hughes, i didn't mean to cut you off no, so that's, right. oh, that's good news that was good that's news. good news now we'll have the personnel with dr ann garrett Chairman, members of the board, for your information, you have 14 uh, employment, excuse me, separation from employments. You have three employee status changes. You have six leave of absences. For your approval, you have uh, one separation from employment, 11 employments, 20 employee status changes, one leave of absence, one contracted service, seven substitutes, five employee coaches, five non-employee coaches, seven employee coach services. This time I entertain a motion that we approve the uh, personnel as presented. I'll make a motion. Ms. Barrett's made the motion. I hear a second. I'll second. Except Mr. Clark. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Carrot. <clears throat> Anything else need to come before the board? At this time, the meeting is adjourned.